Well, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to those on the webcam and watching us. A special hello to all of our visitors today. Well, there is a familiar section of scripture back in Luke chapter 14 that I'd like to cover today, if you want to head back there. We've probably read Luke chapter 14 maybe a thousand times, but I'd like to look at it from maybe a slightly different lens today and see if we can draw out something different to consider. Now, Luke chapter 14 is filled with Jesus Christ's teachings on a variety of topics. We're going to pick up the thread in verse 25 of chapter 14. But leading up to this point, again, is a variety of principles that Jesus Christ expands on. In verse 15, it's the parable of the Great Supper. And in that parable, we have all these people making excuses as to why they can't come to this great feast Essentially, they had uh, their priorities in the wrong place here. And then in verse 25, and this is where we're going to pick it up, Jesus Christ really expands on this concept. It's not just where your priorities lie, but how you focus your entire life. And this is titled, Leaving All to Follow Christ in my Bible. It it might be the same in yours. Or it also might have uh, the main theme called Counting the Cost. And this is one of the core scriptures that we use in baptism counseling, and there's no doubt as to why. So let's pick it up. Luke chapter 14, verse 25. Luke 14, 25. It said, Now great multitudes went with him, that's Jesus, and Jesus turned and said to them, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, we understand in the context there that means to love less by comparison, does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, his own life also. He cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. All right, so we're already getting this concept here of a personal investment in becoming a follower of Christ. Verse 28. For which of you, intending to build a tower, does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it, lest after he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all who see him begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king, going to make war against another king, does not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to meet him who comes against him with 20,000. Or else, while the other is still a great ways off, he sends a delegation and asks conditions of peace. Verse 33, so likewise, whoever of you, whoever of you does not forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple. So it's interesting to me that the word count there, as in count the cost, it has this underlying meaning of using pebbles as enumeration. And the thought being that you kind of gather pebbles or sticks together, and then at the end, you kind of look to see what you have, what you've collected, like to count the total amount thereof. And it's only used in one other spot in the Bible, and it's back in Revelation 13, verse 18. I'll just quote that. And this is what it says there. It says, let him who has understanding calculate, that's the same word, calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, his number is 666. Now that doesn't mean that you're literally counting down the people till you hit number 666. And you say, well, there's the guy, there's the beast. No, it doesn't mean that, of course. It means that you are gathering together all of the components of the evidence so that you can reach a conclusion. And likewise, here in Luke, it's also not that you're literally walking down the aisles of Lowe's, counting off all the two-by-fours to make sure you have everything you need, all the raw material to build a tower, but rather you are making a mental consolidation of all the investment required to start and fulfill that task, and you have made the decision based on that evidence that you have gathered. So you can see why this is often often used in the context of baptism. It's the idea that you need to understand the terms of the contract before you were able to commit to that relationship. 
because baptism is not just a one-time event that you do and then you're just done, but rather it's a commitment to a change of who you are for the longest of long terms. Now that perspective of this scripture might be lost. The counting of the cost is not a one-time event. Just like as the commander has to continually take stock of his army throughout the entire campaign, the counting of the cost in our relationship of Jesus Christ is also an ongoing endeavor. When we commit to follow God's way of life, Part of that cost is understanding what that ongoing investment is required to be throughout our whole lives. Well, what's another way that we can look at this? Well, I'd like you to consider the lake island of Visingo, Sweden. Has anyone heard of that place? I would be shocked if anyone had. It's a tiny little place. I wouldn't blame you. It's in a, a little region of Sweden, and it's unique for a very specific reason. Now, Sweden, of course, if you can think back to your geography lessons, it has a lot of coastline to protect. And er in the early 1930s, they were part of the devastating Napoleonic Wars, and it did not go well for them. They were on the wrong side of that battle. And during those wars, they realized that they needed to have some sort of dominance over their coastline if they were to have long-term survival. So they decided as a nation to commit to an extremely long-term investment. And talking about counting the cost, this one definitely qualifies. On the lake island of Vasingo, Sweden, they started to plant trees, lots of trees. Over 300,000 oak trees were planted there. And the reasoning was that if they were going to have any form of sea dominance, then they were going to need boats. And in order to have the best quality boats of the day, they needed long, straight, powerful trees. And to get those, they needed to plant slow-growing hardwood trees. So as a nation, they committed themselves to that tremendous investment. And that investment wasn't just the initial cost of planting the trees, but also the ongoing maintenance and upkeep, et cetera, for years and years and decades. And they did this knowing full well that it would be more than a generation later before they would be able to capitalize on that investment. Now, thinking about counting the costs in our relationship with God, it's also not just a one-time investment, but a continual evaluation for the rest of our lives. And when we think about it that way, some scriptures might just land slightly differently. Let's notice one in 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2, and we'll pick it up in verse 1, 2 Timothy 2, verse 1. It says, You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men and women. Commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. In other words, invest in, in keeping it going and spreading. You, therefore, must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Again, enduring hardship, working through it, growing through it. No one engaged in warfare tangles himself with the affairs of, of this life, that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And also, if anyone completes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules, and the hardworking farmer must be the first to partake of the crops. All of these events and actions portraying the fact that it is a continual, ongoing process that requires investment over the long haul. A little more than a year ago, we wanted to start building Lucas's credit file. In today's society, credit makes up such an important part of what you're able to do. And one of the biggest parts of building a credit file is the length of your accounts that you have. With the longer you have accounts opening, the better that is. So in trying to think ahead, we open a couple of joint accounts with Lucas, so that trying to think how he will be able to have that credit file ready for him when he is ready, several years down into the future. And of course, it's a double-edged sword. He has to be able to have the credit, and he has to know what to do with the credit. Both of those require us starting to work with him now so that in several years down the future, he's better prepared and he's reinforced with good habits and behaviors. 
And that's something just as temporary as a silly credit score. Something that is for all eternity, like what we're called here for, requires much more investment and planning and reevaluation. Well, in conclusion, I'd like us to think back to our little island nation, Scandinavia. The crazy thing about our friends in Sweden is that after this tremendous investment, they did have amazing amount of strong, tall, straight trees. By the time it came to harvest them, they didn't need them anymore. The way boats were made changed quite a bit in 150 years when they started. It started out with wood, of course, but then moved to metal, and now it was all steel. So in the end, they did successfully count the cost for that project, but it was directed to the wrong goal. Back in our starting scripture, Jesus Christ looked around at the multitude and he saw people all over the spectrum in terms of commitment. Some people were there just to hear the new thing of the day. Some people were there just to get fed some physical food. But others, though, they were excited about what they heard. Others took it right to their heart. And in the midst of this, Jesus Christ pointed out that no matter where you are on this spectrum, eventually you're going to have to decide where you fall and where you want to put the resources in your life. In verse 27, still Luke 14, we read it before, says, whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Such a tremendous investment, such a tremendous reward that awaits. Well, let us double down on our own investments, knowing that it goes for a real goal and a true promise that can never be obsolete. Let us count the cost, wholeheartedly commit, and invest continually in our relationship with God.